Welcome back friends. In this video we're following up from the previous video where we sent messages between the Greengrass Core device and AWS IoT Core. In this video I'll be showing how to extend that to the edge of your network with Greengrass client devices. Specifically these are devices which use the MQTT protocol to talk to your Greengrass Core device which will be running a local MQTT broker. To start, I've installed Greengrass on my device, and it's using the default setup. With Greengrass installed, the first step is going to be to create a deployment for Greengrass. I already have one here, which I'll go ahead and revise to add the necessary components for client devices to connect to Greengrass. I will start by selecting an MQTT broker. In this case, I'm going to use Maquette. The other choice for broker is called EMQX. This broker is external to Greengrass, meaning it runs as a separate process. What's special about this broker is that it supports the MQTT version 5 protocol. However, on Linux it requires Docker, and in this example I have not installed Docker, so I'm going to stick with Maquette for now. So that my client devices can find my Greengrass core device, I'm also going to install the IP detector component. With these components selected, I will now go ahead and deploy them. Simply click Next, and then Deploy. Now the deployment has completed, first thing I'm going to do is to go to my Core Devices page and find this Core Device. I'll then look under the Client Device tab, and have a look for the Cloud Discovery configuration. Because I deployed the IP Detector component, our Greengrass Core device's IP address should be showing up here. However, as you can see, this is currently empty. So let's have a look at why that's the case. If I log into my device, and then I have a look at the log file, we'll see that there is an error here. So just to zoom in on this a bit, I can see that there is an error here that it failed to upload IP addresses. And it tells me to make sure that this policy grants update connectivity info permission and also ensure that there is a Greengrass service role with this account. This is something that we haven't seen before, this idea of a Greengrass service role. So let's have a look at that. In the console, the service role can be found by going to settings at the bottom. And again, going to the bottom, we see Greengrass service role. And in this case, there is no role configured. If I go to attach a role, I will see that there are currently no roles available. So this means I need to create a role, as suggested here, with the AWS Greengrass resource access role policy attached. Going to the IAM console, we want to trust an AWS service. In this case, we want to trust Greengrass. So I'll search for that and select it and click Next. And the policy we want to attach is what it said here. I can select this role now and attach that policy. And now I will create this role, call it Ingress Service Role. Now with that created, I can come back here in the IoT console and attach the role that we just created. Now that it's attached, Greengrass will be able to use this role to perform actions in our account. And in this case, what we wanted it to do was to update the IP address. So let's see if that worked. With the Greengrass service role created, we can now see that the IP address is available on the console. In my particular case, this device happens to have two IP addresses which are next to each other but that's all fine. Nothing wrong with that. Now that our Greengrass Core device is set up to publish its IP address, now we need to create a client device which will connect to our Greengrass Core device MQTT broker. In order to connect some device to Greengrass, first we're going to need a device. So I will go in the console to Things, and we're going to go ahead and create a new single thing. This is my Greengrass client device. And we're going to use the certificates created for us by AWS. 
Now simply follow the instructions to download the certificate and private key as well as the root CA. And with all of that done, now we will connect this Greengrass Core device to the client device. I've already followed the instructions to download and install the AWS IoT Device SDK for Python, which contains an uh, example for connecting to your Greengrass Core device. All we need to do now is to provide the certificate and private key, and it will be able to attempt to connect to our Greengrass Core device. Now, using the example provided by the device SDK, we will attempt to discover the Greengrass Core device and then connect to it. In this command, make sure that you have set the thing name to be the thing name of the client device. And additionally, make sure that the region here is correct. So in my case, we'll go ahead and run it. And we can see that it failed with a 403 error. And 403 means that there is an authorization problem. So let's see why that might be. When I created the client device, AWS IoT automatically created a certificate, but I did not attach any policies. So in this case, we are attempting to discover Greengrass, but we have no permission to do that. So I'll go ahead and attach a policy, which does allow me to discover. Because in this policy, what we have is just Greengrass with an asterisk. So I'm allowed to do any Greengrass operation from this client device. Of course, you can further scope down this policy, but that's not necessary for the example here. Now, with that permission, let's go ahead and try this again. Let's clear my screen and run it again. This time we have a different error. This time it's a 404, which means that something wasn't found. And in this case, what isn't found is the Greengrass core device because we never did anything to associate this client device with a particular Greengrass core device. So to do that, in the console, I will go to core devices, then the client device tab, where we saw the MQTT broker endpoints. There are no client devices associated with this core device. So I will click to associate a device and plug in the name of the device that I want to associate and now click the Associate button. Now that that's done, let's try our command once more and test it out. In this case, we got something pretty different. We got a discovery response here, which includes a list of Greengrass core devices, as well as the connectivity information, which includes the IP address, which we know is set. It also includes the Certificate Authority, which this core device will present uh, to the client device when the client device attempts to connect. However, in this case, the connection failed. So let's find out why our client device was not able to connect to the core device. In this case, I will look at the Greengrass log file. And I'm just going to jump to the end and scroll back up a little bit. Here we can see that the authenticator rejected the MQTT credentials where the ID was the ID of our client device. And we can see this certificate presented, and this happens to be the certificate for our client device. So why isn't our client device allowed to connect to our core device? That's because I skipped another step in the deployment. I need to tell Greengrass that it should allow devices to connect to it, and specifically, which devices are allowed to connect. So I need to revise this deployment, and I need to add a new component called Client Devices Auth. And this component absolutely must be configured. By default, it won't do anything for you. So let's see what this looks like here. If I look in our documentation at the Client Device Auth component, jumping down to the configuration, and I will go down to the example provided. This is one example policy for client devices to connect to the core device. First, you create a definition for a group of things. 
which has a rule that allows you to define which thing names this policy will apply to. In this example here, it is selecting everything with a thing name that is my client device ending with anything. And then it applies the policy called my restrictive policy. And if we look at the definition for my restrictive policy, you can see that what it's allowed to do is to connect. It's also allowed to publish on a specific topic. And it's allowed to subscribe to a specific topic filter. Let's take this as an example and use it in our deployment. I'm going to let the thing name be anything at all. And since this won't be very true, I will just call it my permiss permissive policy. I still want to allow it to connect. And I also want to allow it to publish. But in this case, I just want it to be able to publish on any topic at all. Same for subscribe. I'd like it to be able to subscribe to anything at all. So with this, I will confirm that. And we'll go ahead and deploy that. And then we will try once again to connect our client device to the core device broker. And we will attempt to connect once more. And indeed, we are publishing and receiving. So we've now successfully connected a Greengrass client device to our Greengrass core device. And that client device is able to both publish and subscribe to MQTT messages, which are staying entirely local within your local network or even local device. These messages are MQTT, but they do not go through AWS IoT Core and they do not require internet to work. Some important things to note is that your client device must connect to the Greengrass MQTT broker with an MQTT client ID, which matches its thing name in AWS IoT Core. Now that we have our client device publishing to the local broker, let's see what we can do with that to make it a little bit more useful. I will go ahead and deploy a new component. The component I want is the local debug console. I also want the MQTT bridge component. The MQTT bridge component allows us to forward messages from the local broker either to the local publish and subscribe system or to IoT Core, and also um, vice versa for messages going the other way. I'm gonna configure the local debug console. I do not want it to use HTTPS. I'm just on a single device, and I think I can trust myself. In the bridge, we need to configure this component as well so that it will actually do something. In this case, I want it to forward some messages from the local broker up to AWS IoT Core. So let's have a look at what the bridge configuration looks like. The configuration is a mapping, which takes some name. The name does not matter, but it must be unique. It then has a topic pattern, and then a source, and finally a target. You can also specify a couple other things, such as a target topic prefix, which will add this prefix onto the beginning of the topic before it sends the message onto the target. So I'll just take this as an example and then edit it. Here I will delete all the extraneous ones. And what we will do is to keep with this option here to forward messages from clients slash anything slash hello slash world. With this done, I will now deploy that. Now the deployment is completed. I'm going to go in our AWS IoT Core console to the MQTT test client. And what I'd like to subscribe to is clients slash anything. And currently we can see that there are no messages. So let's switch back to our client device and get this started again. We are able to connect and now messages are being sent. So now we will look back in the console and we can see indeed we have messages coming in. Let's say hello world with an increasing number. And the specific client device is here because client device one.
So this is all as expected. We now have messages successfully going from a client device to the local MQTT broker, through the local MQTT bridge, and then up to AWS IoT Core. Since I also deployed the local debug console, let's have a look at what that does. I should have done this before, but that's okay. I will revise the deployment, and I'm going to edit the configuration for the bridge component. And what I'm going to do here is to create a new mapping, which will send these same messages over to the local PubSub. With this configuration deployed, I'm now going to go into my VS Code, which is a remote instance you can see at the bottom, bottom left side. And what I'd like to do is to go into ports and forward a port. In my case for the local debug console, I want 1441 as well as 1442. Now back in the browser, I'll open up localhost colon 1441, which is the port for the local debug console. It's asking me for a username, which I know is going to be debug, and it's asking me for a password, which I don't know. So we need to go back to our Greengrass core device, and I need to use the local Greengrass CLI component in order to get a password. So the command here is called get debug password, and indeed it gives me a username, which I already knew, and the password. So using this password, I am able to sign into this local debug console. I haven't shown this off previously, but it is an excellent tool for debugging components, as well as changing their configuration without a deployment. But what we're interested in here is a relatively new feature, which is the messaging test client. You can see that it will use local PubSub, and in this case, I'm just going to subscribe to absolutely everything happening on local PubSub. If I now spin up our client device, we can now see on the local PubSub, these messages are coming in again on the client device Hello World topic. So our MQTT bridge is able to successfully send messages from the local MQTT broker, both over local PubSub as well as to AWS IoT Core. And that is it for this video. Really hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. In the next video, I'll be looking more at the local debug console to show how it can be used to efficiently create components as well as debug them.